Right, hello and welcome to another three string Scarbox guitar lesson from Cody Guitar. So, great tune. Um, they're coming thick and fast this year. Sorry for the short gap over the past couple of weeks. This is, of course, Paris, Texas by Ry Kuda. Now, uh, film soundtrack, but it's, uh, it's pretty distinctive. You know, great atmospheric, spacious slide playing. Uh, Ry Kuda is, of course, one of the most notable slide players of, you know, 20th century, uh, certainly of his generation. And um, this is uh, just a fantastic piece of sort of Americana. And uh, the original is in D, open T tuning. I'm, uh, I'm unfortunately still in G here. I've not got around to changing these strings, but uh, you can learn how to play this um, following this and if you wanted to play it along with the original track then just put a slightly thicker set of strings on tuned to DAD and everything here all of the frets general sequence chords is going to fit absolutely perfectly along with the original recording itself so let's just get straight on with learning how to play the tune okay so here's the open strings we've got G D and G, high G. So I'm I'm playing this finger style. I mean, you can probably just about get away with using a pick, but uh, I'm I'm going to show you finger style. I think it works better for kind of dynamics and things. And like I said, the original is in D tuning, but it's based around very simple melody that kind of starts off going to fret seven which in G tuning is a D, and then it goes to G afterwards, open G afterwards. And it just goes backwards and forwards between those two a couple of times. It eventually goes to a C, which is fret five. Uh, so, so if you're familiar with playing blues, these are just the three standard chords that you, you get in a, a blues. But the notes are in the melody, eight down to seven. Now I'm plucking the middle string here. And that's actually the same notes. So eight to seven on the middle string and going up to three on the top string. It's the same note, but it allows us, if we play them in these two different places, it allows us to land on the correct chords. So I'm actually going to cover all of the strings to start with, with the slide. So I'm using it on the third finger, as you can see. And we've got... So slide up to eight. And then go back to seven. I think I separated them out to start with, but basically you just you can play all three strings and that just gives you a D chord. So you can kind of slide into eight. It's very subtle, like timing's you know very, very loose here, so you don't have to worry about playing particularly sort of rhythmically. And then into three. And then down to the open string, open strings, which gives you a G chord. Okay, now uh, I'll just explain a little bit more at the end, but of, of this video. But basically, yeah, I'm going to do a couple of, of videos uh, later on, directly after this one, and they're going to be looking at uh, certain aspects, technique of muting to tidy up the sound, but also vibrato which might be quite helpful for this one so I'm, I'm not going to cover vibrato in this particular uh, video but I will I will link to those when they land so you can check them out and it will make it sound fantastic hopefully so you do that twice now really spacious like roughly speaking it's kind of like it's, it's sort of four beats in a bar and it's like four one two three four He's not, he's, I don't think he's counting it. I think he's probably almost like responding to the, 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 the visuals in the music as opposed to trying to keep a steady pace. But it's roughly like that. You do the, the single note on four, land on the chord on one. 
do it for the third time. Eight, pluck in on the middle string, land on D again. Into three on the top string, but this time slide into fret five and you change chord. Give it a bit of variation. So I'm on a single string there, but then I'm gradually going to creep up to get onto all three for the, for the C. And then just to finish off, the last thing you do is middle string is basically just another slide into, oh really slow isn't it, another slide into three and then finish on open D. Now you're almost in some places like implying chords as much as anything so I just like to, I don't know if it completely sounds the same as the original, but it, gi it gives it the correct overall character. So um, if you just like land on fret two, that sounds like a D chord because if you've had a go at playing chords before in GDG tuning, that is a low position D power chord. That is a high D power chord just barring across or holding the slide across but down here we've got fret 2 fret 2 and the open D so right at the end you can definitely you're landing on a D in the melody in the riff but you can imply a D chord by adding in a subtle fret 2 afterwards and again when you get used to your vibrato you can you can kind of like add a bit of extra atmosphere so that is basically section one which repeats but let's try it from a different angle okay so we've got fret eight on the middle string slide into it down to seven for your d chord three on the top string you don't need to cover all of the strings now. And then you've, you've got all of them for the G chord. Same again. Third time. Into D again. Slide into G, uh, so, sorry, fret three. But this time, keep going up to fret five and starting on one string with the slide, creep across all of them. And then middle string. Now on the original, it, it, it repeats that, that first section, we call that section A. After that, you're going up to melody really really spacious hardly any notes here slide into fret 7 slide into fret 12 now it's higher pitch sounding on on the uh, six string version that Raikou did because he's, he's got more strings we're, we're missing a lot of our higher higher strings uh, same notes though as you slide into 7 cover all of the strings because that also creates the, the D chord and then up to 12 still cover um, all of the strings with the slide and that gives you a G chord you do that twice really loose with the timing doesn't really matter almost you know sounds more expressive more interesting if you go out of time and just hang there for a bit kind of like trance yourself out with the vibrato or something and then go into fret 12 and then the next bit we can lift off all of the strings and then just slide into 12 and back down to 10 and then let's have a couple of open strings with that then 7 just on one string again with the slide and then cover all of the strings so it's landing on the C so that's 12, 10, 7, all of 
of the strings. And then three. Down uh, to fret two. And if I land on fret two, that, and, and add that open middle string, that sounds like a D chord. So it's gradually working its way down. And then to finish off, I'm gonna, I've run out of um, sort of notes almost on this top string, so I'm gonna finish the melody off on this middle string. So I'm gonna go uh, five, three. And that, that kind of gives you the sound of a sort of G7, sort of spacious G7. Slightly bluesy sound. So right at the end, you've got three, two, with the open middle D string, and then now I'll go back to the other angle in a minute. But right at the end here, we need that slide angle so that I'm not catching string one with the slide. So you see, it's quite sort of diagonal. Really trying to pick out the um, the, the edge of the slide, really. So that was section B. Let's do it again. So um, you finished off section A. Just by kind of implying that fret two really subtly. Slide into seven and cover all the strings. So I'll do that again. Into D. Same again. Cover all the strings into G. Lift off the strings, just the top one. Got some open strings there. Seven to all of the strings for C. Top string only. And then sort out your slide position. So right at the end there. So a little bit out of tune. So you need that that album, um, sort of angle so you don't you don't catch the string. Also, you got to be watch you don't over overshoot and catch that one as well. It's quite it's quite a sort of fine point. Uh, to, to land on that string and not catch either of those, so it takes a little bit of practice. My thumb is staying almost, it's almost like a tram line, I'm sort of moving up and down that string, and you see my hand position is staying exactly the same, it's it's being kind of moved up by the elbow and the, the, the top, top part of my arm. Okay, so that is section B. And you do all that twice as well. But at the end of section B, for the second time, it goes to some fretted notes. Okay, so we can still play these without taking the slide off. So I'm going to use me, me pinky on fret 12. I'm going to do a little bar, just squeeze down on, on these these two. Now th this is a little bit more difficult. Um, th this is a really nice part, less distinctive. Everyone remembers the slide part from, from, from this song. So if you learn section A, section B, that is great, sounds really good. Um, it, you can actually just finish there. And, and if any of these fretted parts are difficult, then just ignore them if you've not been playing for very long, to be honest. You know, keep, keep, keep it simple. But if you want to try them, we're going um, 12, little bar, 10, 10. So I'm playing middle string, top string. Drop the bar down, fret seven, fret seven. So it's 12, 10, 10. 10, uh, 7, 7, and that's middle, high G, middle, high G. Let's add bass in. Bass. 
space. Now we're into some slightly stretchy chords here. I'll go over some alternate versions of these are difficult, but these sound the best. So five, nine, three, seven. So you see I'm starting with the middle string first. So I'm playing, I'm gonna save me thumb because I'm gonna put bass back in in a minute. So it's probably in, index finger on the middle string, middle finger on the top, top G string one. So it's five, nine, five, drop that entire shape down, three, seven, three, quite a stretch that. Bit easier, two, five, two. With the bass we can go do what you call a pull, play them, play them together. Bass, let's do a bass again. So I'm basically playing a bass note exactly the same time with every middle string, but not with the top G. Little transition. And then in two, Next line, very similar, actually going to start on 7 and 10. So you see I'm using my little finger and my first finger every time. Back to where we started, 5 and 9, 3 and 7, and 2 and 5. Right. So here's the end of section B. See how low down my thumb is. I'm happy to use my wrist as well to be able to reach round to get these shapes. Right up to seven and ten this time. Five and nine. Just watch, don't catch the strings with me. Slide. It's quite poised there, ready to catch the strings if I'm not careful. Okay, and then we're in two. What we could class as section D. So it's open, cover all the strings, right up to fret five to the C. Pluck it again, so that's, I'm, I'm basically plucking from three, sliding, relatively slow slide into five, five, three, slide up to five, pluck from five and slide up to seven. Really lazy, lazy, slow slide into three. And then to add some higher notes, we can go five and seven on the top two strings. That's a, a G power chord, that. That's a G power chord. Five and seven is also a G power chord. Really, really loose timing. You can just tickle those strings in whatever order you want. It all sounds great. And you do it all again. So the second time is basically the same. I'll do that again. slower sliding into fret 3 the second time and uh, we, we don't need to go up here we just let that open uh, G power chord ring out um, I think this is following film footage because uh, there's quite a big gap before he comes in with the next section so you know you, you, you can just leave it for as long as you want but into section E we've got some more fretted notes and So we're, we're doing a little bar across frets seven 
and then quickly jumping up to 14. So you've probably got double dots on fret 12, two frets up, and then 10. And this is... It's kind of like two, two chords really. So there's this very airy sounding fretted one and it's seven up to 14 and 10 and then just slide, slide into 12 just on the top string because I'll fit, fill, fill the, the, the bottom out with these two open so it sounds like we're going to a G. So it's quite quick. can go thumb at the beginning, thumb, thumb, just let that one ring out, slide into 12. You do that and it's, it's basically the same chords and he's, he's just mixing up the order in which he plays the notes. Um, so this time instead of going, the, the previous time was thumb, index, middle, this time we go middle index, so we play string one and then two. So you've got to go from that bar up to fret 10 and then using your little finger on fret 14. Same slide into 12, maybe a bit quicker this time. Final time, same notes, but play, play this one twice. So seven up to 10, 14. Finally, change chord. So after you've slid into uh, 12 from 10, go down to 5, go down to the C. And then 7 down to, sorry, fret 10 on, on just on one string down to fret 7 for the D. And that's the end of the section. Um, I, I, I just finished it off in this, exactly the same way as section B finished, like just picking out the middle string, going uh, five up to th up to five down to three. Okay. But better do that again. So first of all, you go three, two, one strings. That is right up to fr fourteen and ten. Slide, just covering one string. This time, start on plucking string one. So move up with your first finger. Slide into 12, just let these ones ring through. Pluck this string twice. And then move up to 10. Up to 12, but straight down to 5. And then to finish off 10 into fret 7 for the um, for covering all of the strings for the D. You cover all the strings for the for the C all them with the slide and then the 10 down here and I just finished off like that but he actually continues with the uh, structure of the song at this point but that is basically uh, all of the sections so if you wanted to now I've, I've not done a chart for this one because to be honest, it's it's very floaty. It's very you know sort of expressive, spacious, um, and 
I don't want to get done for copyright by tabbing out uh, somebody else's music. So um, try and go through this video in sections so that you can just sort of learn each part. So he plays section A two times, then he plays section B two times, and then there's the little uh, bridge sort of um, taking you into section C, which is the fretted notes. Uh, all the way through that. Section D, sliding up. And um, you do all that twice. Section E is the um, kind of slightly vague and slightly more varied fretted note bit that we just did. Sort of like call and response going into the slide the, the, the second time when you go back to the G chord. And in total, after you've gone through all of that up to section E, it then goes back to B again, which is going all the way through the high spacious slide. Um, <clears throat> goes all the way through that. Uh, it goes back to section D, goes back, goes all the way through that once. So section B once, section D once. Back to section A. All the way through that. And then it finishes off with section C. But we can start up here. And do it twice. I'm, I'm going a bit too quick here. How do we want to finish it? It's a nice airy kind of spacious sound. I can just leave it on that, sounds quite nice. Or, you know, I could maybe just do a slide into three, finish on the open. All right, so that's it. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, I really like this. I think it's great to play. Um, sort of put a load of reverb on the amplifier and you're away basically. But uh, if you, depending on how you find your slide playing skills, I'm going to drop another couple of videos directly after this one, just looking at some basic sort of technical areas. Um, things such as muting. <laughs> So you can you can basically sort of control the sound quite a lot with this hand. Um, you, you don't want to use it all the time, but it's, it's definitely useful for some things. It will sort of really tidy up certain like passages and sections. And also, how do you get great vibrato without the whole coordination thing breaking down? Because I know I, I teach quite a few people, and uh, I do find that a lot of the time when people try and add vibrato into the play, and it actually takes quite a lot of work. Dead easy once you know how, bit of a nightmare if you don't. So uh, we're gonna have a look at both of those elements in the next two videos, and we'll see you here again soon on Code the Guitar.